Thank you for coming back to another video for part two of the series. Uh, last video, we went over backup of restore strategies. In this video, we're going to go over identity and account management mechanisms. So let's get straight into it. So the exercise we're going to start with today is uh, surrounding account type, right? So the Windows OS usually has a few default users, right? Which is usually just the administrator in the guest account, right? So when you create a user on the system, um, I mean, if you have some sort of IT experience of just getting a new computer, right? You, you've done some version of this, right? So you can either create it as a standard user with limited permissions or create an, an administrator account with complete control over everything on the system, right? So first, what we're gonna do is actually create a user account. Um, so let's actually get started here. Let me the property line. So, right, so actually, right, uh, all right, perfect. So let's here. Then <clears throat> perfect. So now we can see on the right hand that it displays several users and groups, right? So we can create users and groups here or create a separate organizational unit, right? So actually what we're gonna do is I'm gonna click here and the operation here. So organization. I can't read anymore. All right, so let's do that. All right, perfect. So now I also want to note that the benefit, right, of creating an organizational unit is that you can actually segregate um, the users um, and, and the group from a different department, right? So then the different sets of, of policies can be a force on different um, organizational units. So for example, if we need to encrypt the hard drive only for the finance team, a drive encryption policy can be applied only to the financial organizational unit, right? So it'll make sense hopefully as we, as we go uh, to further into the video, uh, more topics on it. So now that we're back here, right? You can notice that the, uh, the practice lab organizational unit is now created and selected, or it should be selected. Oh, there it is, <laughs> where I was looking at. But of course, at present, there's no user, so we're going to create a new one. So, <clears throat> all right, so we're going to use the name that we used before. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to use one of my favorite people ever, Michael. <laughs> So I'll do my dot point at practice lab. We definitely don't want him to change his password when he logs, right? Just finish. All right, perfect. So now we see, oh, well, he actually. Uh, There it is. All right, perfect. So now we see that the Michael Scott um, account is now created. So I'm just going to keep this open. I'll be moving to our next task. It's going to be configuring user account properties. So uh, usually whether you're local or domain, you can always configure a user account, right, by just modifying its properties like in the other file, right? Uh, even though the local user has limited options, typically the domain user account provides several configurable options, of course. So for example, you can configure the user's address telephone number and, and organization there, excuse me. And, and other, other than these options, you can actually configure the remote desktop options as well and the user group. So we can also disable, uh, disable a user account. Uh, but what we're gonna do now is just configure some user account properties. So, so with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the properties for Mr. Scott. Let's take a look at their account. All right, so first, let's actually, um, Unlock the account. Perfect. And then I don't know. Submit it. Pretty much you can log on at any time, right? So we can actually set the duration in which uh, Mike is allowed to use his account. So we're enforcing actually the time of day policy on this account or user, uh, whichever hours are assigned when they won't be able to log out outside of these hours. Like that. So if we click the 
first box. Okay, so if it's admitted, please put the second box long gone. Then you can pretty much that. Okay, so um, so we click here. We just know our time block that is. All right. And then I'll just run out of here. So now we can actually double log on to so. Uh, so all the co computers, of course, are collected by default. You can actually change this by selecting just the following computers. I want to, of course, for this one, it's going to be two um, computer we already use. Adding a new computer. <laughs> okay. So we added Win10. Um, so now it's added here. So that means we can click OK. So now that we're on here, uh, let's apply. Okay, we want to work today. I'll call off right now. Perfect. So we're good there. All right. Where is it? So now we can actually reset. So, I do not. The password has been changed, right? And it's, and it's saved that for us in the dialog box. All right, so now we just actually want to disable the account. You'll double check. The account has been disabled with the method that was displayed for us, but we can also re enable the account, which is done here. And we can only do all of these these uh, actions because we are the administrator for this particular server to do this for another user that, that's created, right? So, um, so now we can actually delete Michael Scott. But we've showed all of the different, at least the surface level as they can get the different uh, configurations that we could have for uh, another user when you have admin, uh, admin right. So, um, so what we're going to do is just keep this open so we can actually take account permission. So each user in the system has some default permission, right? It can be modified by adding the user to different groups. So, for example, when you create a user in the domain, part of the domain users, right, by default. So all the permissions applicable to the domain users are applied to the user. So, but you can always add it from the user to another group for a thing, grant or remove particular permission. So, um, so what we're going to do is actually ensure. Um, so let's recreate. Okay. Create the account. So the lazy way, I guess. Okay. All right, I'll just create a new. Let's do it this way I did it before. <clears throat> what should I do is card? <laughs> if you know, you know. Right. Offer. That's right. Perfect. So now I've recreated them. So I'm just going to. Take a look at the properties again. Number of right. So as we can, as I've just stated, now he's literally just set him up. Didn't give him special access to anything in particular. That's out of the realm of possibility. But he's automatically added to the domain user's um, account or domain rather. So now what we're going to do is actually put him in a group. So group policy creator owner. Right. So now that we've um, now that we've added them, I'm sure I do this here. Right, perfect. So now I'm on the uh, the properties dialog box. Besides being part of the domain user group, you can also see he's now part of a the group policy. Right. So we can actually apply and then click OK. Right. And then this allows us to move on to our next exercise, which is account policy. So whenever users are are part of a domain, right, several account policies can. Um, you can kind of uh, 
uh, relate this to just municipalities, right, as far as uh, counties, uh, state, city, town, village, or may have you, right? You can apply them to users, groups, and systems that are part of a domain, right? So if a user is not part of a domain, you can actually use the local security policy to apply account policies. So uh, there's actually um, a few few different ways, right, as far as we can do this. Uh, one of them is um, network locations, right? So you can take a look into geofencing, geotagging, location time-based logins, and possible time travel or risky logins, right? Configuring a, a, a password policy, right? Which is what we're actually going to get into uh, specifically, uh, right? And of course, in a Windows environment, environment, you can create or define the type of password that a user can create, right? So. Uh, what we're going to do is take a look at the GPM um, for here, All right? And then open this up, open this up, and then set up. Then take a look at our policy. Sorry, we were just mentioning that we're going to get the security. And account policy. Right now, to configure the password policy on the local system, we would normally open the local security uh, policy console, right? And we just navigate two different ways, right? So we can actually. Oh, all right. So now that the password related policies, they, they're enabled by default. Um, let's. Um, so this just now with this policy enabled, you just won't be able to use the last 24 passwords to the price that you had used <laughs> on your, on a particular account. So what we're going to do is, there's actually quite a lot. So what we're going to do is change it to five. All right. So now that the domain users just won't be able to use the last five passwords. So when the user changes their password for the sixth time, then the first of the five passwords can be reused. So uh, we can actually click on the nice here and let's just let's go. Okay. Not sure why, but the window just keeps going away. Um, but we changed it to eight, the default value is seven, right? So now that the minimum map. Uh, password length is eight. Um, that's pretty much the policy. You can't have any character. Uh, you can't have your amount of characters for your password be less than eight. Instead of parameters of the accepted characters that we do have that you can use to constitute uh, a password. So I'm just going to keep the default policy for the remaining policies, right? So uh, let's actually take a look here, right? Okay. All right, nonetheless, that's fine. Let's take a look at the properties here. All right. All right, what's going on here? There it is. Not sure what's going on. All right, so weird. All right, so we're going to change this to, I think we should do it for five. What do you guys think? No? Okay, I'll leave it for 30. That's fine. All right, let's go practice. Uh, anyway, but the suggested value changes, of course, is. Uh, change in the box and then back to the corner and following it. All right, so um, so now it, it will reset the, the few values, the account lockout threshold that we did and reset account lockout out there, right? So it closed automatically, it looks like, because I did not close it out, even though I was having, having issues, there it is. All right, perfect. So, now we're just going to manage guests and admin accounts via the group policy. So at the domain level, you can manage guests 
an admin account via the group policy, right? We actually done this before in another video. So if we need to perform the same task at a system level, we can actually uh, open up open a few things that get us from the security policy console uh, to navigate to a node that allows us to take a look at these, these uh, configurations, right? So that's actually what we're going to do. So let's take a look here. Uh, let's see. Uh, sort of local security options. We can see a list, a lot of lists of policy settings that are, or options that are, that are not fine. Um, but what we're going to do now is just disable the guest account on all domain systems. Uh, and we're also going to rename account too. So let's actually have it here. Big I okay. Okay, perfect. This not find this. We're gonna name it to Okay, why back to one we can see here, policy seven, right? So now back on the window, we see that the, again, both policies are now configured. Now we're just going to configure access policies as well. So other than administrator path, the normal user has access, has access to several tools and utilities, right? In Windows at least. So we can actually restrict this access uh, to several tools and utilities. For example, if you're looking to restrict access to the command prompt. So um, I'm actually going to, let's see. Okay. There it is. Okay. Here. Perfect. All right. So now I'm just going to prohibit access. All right. So let's go back to enabled. Okay. So now that the policy is now enabled. All right, so now we're going to take a look um, at the system. That is. I'm just going to prevent access to the command prompt. All right, disabled. Okay, we can see here, disabled. Perfect. So now that the policy is now enabled, we're going to prevent access to registry editing tools as well. So I'll just say that. Oh, come on, there we go. All right, perfect. And actually, um, I confused myself. So enable because of what the nature of what it is. Um, see if when you enable this policy setting and the user tries to open up the command window, this is that's the that's explaining that the action. That's why that's where because the action itself is preventing access, I need to enable it, disable it. So that's why I confuse myself. Probably because it's a bit late. But nonetheless, uh, let's actually take a look at the removable storage, right? 
So now we can actually um, take a look at the windows of like this. <clears throat> All right. Then enabled by. So now when this policy is enabled and it comes to effect, it will prevent write access to the USB drive during time of removal of media. So now we're going to perform an account audit. So usually a user account can be audited locally or um, uh, on a system or audit using it just a group policy. So when you configure a group, group policy, typically you can edit use in a specific organizational unit or even in the entire domain. So we're just going to configure um, account auditing at the domain level. So I'm actually going to stay on this uh, server uh, still. So uh, let's take a look at this over here. So Actually, yeah. okay. Yeah, those are things that I'm looking for. Back up again. Uh -oh. So I'm looking for uh, local policies. And not. Let's check this. All right, perfect. Now we're back on track. It was again, as usual, um, user error, All right? So let's actually take a look here. All right, so, let's, sorry. let's of course define these. And we're gonna unpick this and pick that. Now it's critical to audit the failed logon events, right? Because if one account has continuously failed a uh, logon event, then it could be someone that's trying to get passwords for an account, a user account, particularly this actually happened to me. Within the last 24 hours, someone was trying to access my FanDuel account and I received an email that my account was actually locked because of so many failed login attempts. So this is definitely, it definitely ranges true for any account, whether it's an enterprise uh, computer or network for an account or a personal one, right? This can happen in any in any given moment, any time. So on any account. So now we're just going to, uh, so now the policy is configured, right? So we're also going to configure uh, the auto audit logon event, right? So let's take a look here. Let's define this. And then let's do the same here. All right, perfect. So the policy is now configured. It's always good to enable auditing right on the object that the user is accessing in the domain. So now uh, let's take a look at audit privilege use, right? Let's open it and then same same concept. I have to get the automatic pick. All right, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll do both. All right, perfect. So we're all set there. And with that being said, that brings us to the end of this particular video for identity and account management mechanisms. And uh, just a more brief recap of what we went over. We went over identity, account types, and account policies, and a few things of like uh, uh, 
identity providers, uh, performing audit account, account audits, uh, account permissions, the things of that jazz, and a few other things, right? Next video is going to be identifying different application exploits. It'd be fun. Uh, you stay, uh, stay curious, stay secure, and I'll see you on the next video.